in those early days, um, did you suffer from imposter syndrome? Like th that leap to being an engineer, was was there, especially when you started uh, working a bunch of the design on a team of engineers, was there insecurity? Both yes and no. I think I've, um, I always try to flip my flaws <laughs> into selling points. And for that, so getting that job, I, I was like, oh, you're a team of engineers. Everybody working here is an engineer. Your customers are not all engineers. You need somebody who can be your filter and tell you when something's going to be too hard for your customers to understand. So it was more me being like, oh, no, it might seem that me not having skills is a bad thing, but yeah. actually it's a great thing. I need it. <laughs> I represent the everyday person. I understand yeah. Deeply, yeah, deeply what everybody <laughs> needs and wants. Yeah. Yes, that is me, the representation of the of the average human. Um, but I mean, I, I remember that. So I studied physics for a year in college and then I dropped out. And I had this rule for myself that whenever I did not understand any something, I would ask a question. So I was always raising my hand in class. And it's this room entirely like, auditorium filled with incredibly intelligent people who are mortified of seeming stupid. Yeah. And I think that was really like, and I remember people at the end of the year coming up to me and being like, thank you so much for all the questions you asked, because whenever there was something that I was too scared to ask, you always raised your hand. So I think it is a bit of a skill. And I think that is kind of how I channel my imposter syndrome is I'm just like, no, let's lay it all out there. <laughs> so you're okay being almost like self-deprecating just coming off. I mean, I'm definitely that. I, I kind of lean into, I call myself an idiot. I lean mm -hmm. into being stupid. I think not all heroes wear capes. And the guy and girl who asks the stupid question is everybody's hero, I, including the pr teachers. Yeah. I think it's it's both, it's a double-edged sword. I started out on the internet, kind of, I kind of got the moniker, the queen of shitty robots, because I posted a lot of stuff on slash r slash shitty robots on reddit and people started calling me the queen of slash r slash shitty robots and then the slash r kind of dropped so I, what i'm trying to say is i did not come up with that with myself um but i did happily adopt it so i definitely came from a place of like building things that didn't work and kind of yeah everything going wrong every time like happily failing and I think that was amazing. It was a really powerful tool for me to like not get my perfectionism in the way because if I set out to do something that's great, then I'm never gonna start. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I just need something that looks funny. Um, but what I've realized now is that it was also a defense mechanism. Being self-deprecating is like always beating people to the punch it kind of was a survival tactic on the internet of being like never daring to set out as an expert. And I still do that. Like I'm terrified to tell people how to do something, even if I know, um, because it kind of opens you up for being shot down. So I think I have, I definitely have a conflicted relationship with it. And now, especially as I'm, I'm getting older, I am more skilled than I was before. I mean, I'm a CEO of three businesses and I'm like, I don't need to like keep on talking myself down all the time. So yeah, I think it's definitely something that has served me really, really well. And that is still like a thing that I have in my work life and in my in relationships, but I'm also trying to only do it when it's beneficial to me and not when it's harmful. Yeah, I mean, but when you're as successful as you are, I feel like people like it when you're self-deprecating and you don't take yourself seriously, you have that yeah. humility. Uh, I think it's probably the hardest when you're starting out. Yeah. Cause I don't know. I think no, it was easier then almost, I don't know. But nobody takes you seriously, right? And when you're starting out, when you're young, like. You know, I just realized that I played a lot more stupid than I was and yeah. I think it's also, oh gosh, I can't believe I'm the one bringing this up, uh, but like being a woman in a male-dominated field mm -hmm. and you're like 
try I was just trying to make myself the least amount threatening or like really unthreatening because people are threatened by you in different ways and it's like you have such a thin line that you can walk where you're like okay I need to be just attractive enough for people to not be offended by my appearance but just unattractive enough for people to not sexualize me I have to be just smart and witty enough for people to be like oh my god that's really cool but also shoot myself down enough for other people not to be able to do it or be like, oh, yeah, watch this woman try to thinking that she knows how to build electronics, you know? So it's like... That's a interesting skill to build, especially when you put yourself out there on the internet. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, that's the reality of the internet. And it's a skill you have to kind of develop. And it's actually why a lot of really brilliant people avoid the internet. Yeah. Like, there's not many people... Like, at MIT, for example, there's not many brilliant professors or PhD students and so on, just putting their stuff out there. Because like, <laughs> um, if they what, like if they really put their heart and soul into a thing, first of all, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. And nobody nobody sees it and everyone's like, eh, this is boring. So there's so many failure modes, like this is boring. Or like, like you said, you're coming off as too much of an expert, you're not self-deprecating enough. Mm -hmm. Or like there's just so many failure modes and it's terrifying for people. But I feel like that's a skill you should learn because most people like at MIT, at university and so on are doing a lot of awesome stuff. Yeah. And they should show it off. But I feel like you figured out a really good process of, of showing it off. You've, when you fail, when you succeed, all of it, not taking yourself too seriously, but also revealing through the humor and the self-deprecation a kind of genius, a kind of intelligence and curiosity. Yeah, I just want to snapshot that quote and put it on my LinkedIn on the back profile. Of your book. And the back when of is your book? autobiography coming out? Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say that because like a year from now. Oh gosh. I don't want to I don't want to shit on autobiographies. Yeah. No. No. But even no. just by saying that I'm shitting on autobiographies. I just me being interested enough in somebody to want to read 600 pages about them talking about themselves. It's a, no, oh. well, <laughs> well, that's exactly the kind of person that should write one. But, but also, I'm fucking 32 years old. What do I have to I'm write about? Like, I went through puberty, I lost my virginity, and here we are. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like such a... <laughs> Three chapters. It's a, yeah. it's a coloring book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter seven. I learned to tie my own shoelaces. <laughs>